let's talk about the 10 common mistakes people make when they're learning English, when they're immigrants to a different country. I see this so often, it's very important for me to make this video. You will learn a lot from it. You might even see yourself making these mistakes. So the first thing is people having no expressions. Now this list consists of detailed grammar mistakes that I'm gonna point out and how to improve those, as well as just overall mistakes, personality mistakes, communication mistakes. And this is a big one, no expressions. So a native speaker would say, the weather is so beautiful outside. It hasn't been like this since forever. I love it. It's beautiful. A non-native speaker will say, the weather outside is beautiful. It's good. It's, it's really nice. Monotone. And that is what I notice a lot in students when they're preparing for their exams. I tell them, if you want to score good in speaking, you got to be expressive. There are marks for these things. So make sure you're expressive and talk like a human being. The problem is native speakers talk two times more like a human being. They are over expressive sometimes. Sometimes it's almost like an exaggeration and it's, you might think, um, why are they making such a big deal out of something that is very uh, trivial? But to them it's not, or maybe it is. It is just that they speak with, ev with emphasis in everything. And you should too, if you wanna sound like a native speaker, emphasize your words more, especially for females. Women do more exaggerations, more expressions uh, compared to males. So if you're a female, make sure to be expressive change your volume, fluctuate it, and give emphasis where you need to. Talk like a human being, not like a robot. Point number two is using more better, more better, more nicer, more cleaner. More and earth never go together. Okay, remember, it's much better, much cleaner, much whatever. I, and I was listening to someone in Fox News today. Um, they also said the same thing, more better, and it's a lot of native speakers who, who do this all the time. I am very careful of this because I'm an English teacher and I always catch people when they're doing this but it is a grammar mistake. If you are doing an English exam, you cannot do that. If you're talking to your friends or family, you'll get a pass, but this is a mistake, just so you know. Okay, mixing uh, your cultural phrases. This is uh, sometimes very funny when people do this and it's uh, in, a, in a nice way, not in a racist way. It's, for example, when you talk about, well, for example, Turkish people, when they're speaking, they say, uh, you know, remember that, um, Yani, that food, Yani, something. I think it's Turkish, they say the word Yani. And uh, people from Pakistan, they would say uh, the word K. K is like, okay. She said K, I'm not good enough. So it's like bringing words from your language into English. And sometimes it's not words, it's the fillers. For example, uh, there are people who mostly say um, right? In some cultures, instead of um, you say eh. For example, I think in, in Portuguese, in Brazil, you say that. So it's, uh, they would say, uh, hey, today I'm not gonna wear a, what you call that? And, and so on. So using fillers or words or expressions from your language into English, don't mix them. It, it obviously shows that you're not using English enough because you have such a strong habit of using your own language that you are even mixing it in English. That's a common mistake. Be careful of that because a lot of people, especially people from your own country might make fun of you. People from other countries won't understand what you just said, but your own people will say that you're mixing up words. So it, it can be pretty embarrassing sometimes. Number four is spending time with immigrants and uh, people from your country. Nothing wrong with it, but if you are preparing for English and you want to get ahead of the game, try to spend time with native speakers or people from different cultures because even in different cultures you would speak in, in english especially if you're in an english-speaking country so that will help not only you but even the other person in speaking english but if you have native speakers around you even better you can definitely practice the perfect english with them i mean not perfect perfect because native speakers also make mistakes but getting out of your community is very important because i have seen people in my family and I'm sure you have too, who have been living here for many, many years, but they came initially from another country. How does a person after 30 years living in Canada or the US not speak proper English? That's what you wonder, right? The obvious reason is for 30 years, they were hanging out with their own community and that's where problem, problems happen. So you will not learn anything if you don't branch out, if you don't get out of just your community. If you're stuck there, you will speak the same way you have been speaking for decades. And I'm talking about 20, 30 years. I see people with virtually no difference, okay? So making sure you spend time with other people will also help you. 
Point number five is not having NF revision. So I would tell this person in my family, I'm not gonna take their name, but I would tell them, you made this mistake. After a week, it's the same mistake and the same. It's sometimes years and it's the same mistake. Because if someone tells you, like a friend or family, someone close to you that you made a mistake, or you learned it from TV, you saw someone talking like that and you figured it out, or you have some software online where you do your learning, or you bought one of our courses, whatever it is, you learn something, you have to revise it. If you if someone just tells you that, you will not remember. It's different than remembering other things like grocery list or uh, things about your exam. In language, if it's about speaking, you made a mistake there, you gotta speak that same sentence, that same mistake. If it's about writing, you gotta rewrite it correctly multiple times. So not only do you have to revise, but you have to do that revision multiple times to ensure you remember your mistakes. And most of us are lazy and we don't do that. That's a common reason why our English doesn't improve as immigrants. Point number six, not watching the uh, TV channels, TV shows, or movies that are in English. Why wouldn't you? I mean, Hollywood is the top industry in the world, and Netflix produces the best uh, TV shows and movies, and, and you, we, we all know this, right? Singing and everything, Hollywood is on top. Everything in English is entertaining, so why don't we watch that? Well, because we're stuck with our own TV shows, our own language, our own cultural shows, which I can understand if you like it more, but uh, again, if you wanna improve your English, that wouldn't help much. Try to consume or uh, get more of the product from English speaking channels, radio, TV, YouTube, etc. Watch more of the English based channels, uh, movies and TV shows. That will obviously help you. And if you have subtitles, you can also use them if you're really weak in English. Next point is using a and the incorrectly for the most common mistakes. If I'm making a list, in immigrants or people who speak English as a second language, A and the are the biggest issues. They are called articles. And if you make that mistake, I cannot give you a lesson on that right now. I believe I have a video on A and the, you can check it out on our channel, but you can also go online, type out articles exercise, do a complete exercise, put A, put the in multiple choice questions that you will find. You will find many online quizzes like that and that will teach you where to use things correctly, okay? So misuse of articles is a common issue. Please make sure you improve that. Um, even if you think you're good there, you might not be. Trust me, that is the most common issue. Everybody does that mistake, so avoid that. Number eight is avoid superlative. Most prettiest, most nicest, most cleanest, wrong. You cannot say most and est together. Just like you cannot say more, better, you cannot say er or er together, just like est and est you cannot say together. So nicest, cleanest, that's it. Not most nicest or cleanest. Was again, a common mistake. All right, loose, the spelling, L-O-O-S-E is a common spelling that I see. It is incorrect. When you, when you say the word loose, it's like your shoelace is loose or the knot is loose. It's like not tight, all right? Loose, L-O-S-E is the correct spelling, L-O-S-E. I'm gonna lose my job. I, I don't wanna lose you. If you say that romantically and you write the wrong spelling, it doesn't sound romantic at all, all right? Lose, L-O-S-E, is the correct spelling. Remember that. And the final mistake that most of us make as immigrants or people who don't have English as the first language is being rude, even if you don't wanna be. You might be a nice person, but you might tell someone, do this, do that, bring it upstairs, throw it down, cook this. You have to say, can you? Can you, and sometimes even please, can you please, can you do this? Would you be able to, there, there are variations, but start with can you. Can you do this? Can you bring this upstairs? You have to be polite by using the words can you whenever you need a favor, whenever you wanna ask something, okay? If you don't do that, you sound rude, even if you are not, and people are gonna hate you. So make sure you don't make these mistakes, you avoid embarrassment, avoid awkward situations, and improve your English with these guaranteed steps. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll talk very soon. Take care.